How's it going guys? Nathan from Nathan's DIY Garage and today we're working on the E53X5. Now we had some problems with this thing in the past and it kept spinning loose the bolts to hold the crankshaft, the camshaft pulleys on. So the vandal bolt on the intake that goes in right there, it kept spinning it loose on both sides and I finally got the bottom of it. And what the problem ended up being was these Walmart Torx bits. Now, last couple of these engines I did, I had an OEM bit, or a hardened bit, you might say, a black impact steel. Well, I couldn't find that, <laughs> and I had to use this Walmart one. And when I put on my torque wrench, I think it was really hindering uh, the amount of torque. And the last time I did it, well, this past time, I was torquing it down, and I could see the bit actually twisting. So I'm pretty sure that's what it was. Uh, went and borrowed the right bit uh, just to get this done. Clicked it all in and I think we're good now. I started it four or five times, no check engine light. It seems like it's right. You know, everything seems like it's good to go. There's one other thing I think could be hindering me too. On the exhaust side, the last couple times I did this, I loosened that up on the cam bolt, but it seemed like maybe it wasn't loose enough like a, when I tightened the tensioner down here it wasn't ratcheting the whole thing to take the slack out and I think that was also another problem uh, but a lot of you guys have this problem and it can be bad vanos you know the vanos is full of debris and over actuating under actuating uh, that could cause it also I went ahead and loctited the intake bolts in um, the last time I used that red Loctite, they actually came out pretty, not easily, but you could tell it worked, but it wasn't overly aggressive. Now, I also didn't put a whole bunch on it. We just put a few drops on each bolt, put it in, made sure the hole was dry, made sure the bolt was dry, took some carb cleaner and cleaned it off. And that seemed to work pretty good. So we did that again on both of these. I don't think you have to have that, but it sure is a hell of a good precaution. Uh, because nothing's worse than taking this thing back apart. Now what we have done here, we reassembled a few things, we're waiting on some more parts for it. We put all the cowling back in, that way there's no water possibly getting down here. I don't have to use a piece of cardboard to cover up the engine anymore. That's all sealed off. And we still gotta put the air box and the washer tank in. Uh, this thing had some of these pumps, one or both of them were leaking. Yeah, this one was leaking, you can see, at the weep hole. I found those washer fluid pumps on eBay for uh, I don't know, it was probably $8 a piece, I think. It might have been less. And I got a set uh, on the other E53, and it does fine. So I think it was 16 or 15 or $16 for both of them, free shipping. And we have a expansion tank coming. Uh, the expansion tank on this one has a little tiny crack in the bottom uh, where the sensor goes in, and it just drips. So we went ahead and dumped some antifreeze in, a whole gallon, and we have one more issue and it was last time we had this thing running the belt flew off well thought that was kind of weird no we tensioned it up right and what had happened when you see it or not you can see the power steering pump laying down there crooked and it actually busted the tabs off the power steering pump and i hear this is a really common problem uh, i think what we're going to do with this a lot of guys saying they get a new oem one put it on there and it's not very long and it snaps the ears off of it again it's just aluminum housing it's not steel i think we might take that to the local machine shop and get it tig welded and maybe have some extra support put on it and hopefully that'll fix that problem so what we've done for right now we just took or I took my hand spun the water pump the best i could we poured straight antifreeze down to all the hoses uh here in two more days it's supposed to get down to 18 degrees i didn't want this thing to have any chance of freezing up i took the heater core hose held it up in there and poured straight coolant down in it Hopefully we got it. Uh, maybe even tonight I'm going to pull this pump off. And maybe tomorrow I get it to go ahead and uh, get it welded and get it all reinforced a little better if they'll do it. If not, we have to buy a new pump. And I hear the trick to that is to put the bigger washers around the bolts and lock tight the bolts. Apparently the bolts have problems coming loose. They get a little bit loose and it snaps it off. So that's probably what's happened. Uh, then before this thing is done, we're going to have to do the air ride, the airbags in the back. They are leaking, and we have the AC open on this guy. We taped it all off. We should just be able to add to it pretty easily. 
and I think that's really about it and put all the plastic covers and everything back on we're ready to take it for a drive now we had all this apart these tires when we got this thing the tires were already dry rotted obviously they didn't get any better now uh, the CV boot on this side the outer was ripped up and I see they have some pretty good options now for replacing CV boots they have the ones you glue together and then you can just buy OEM one too if you want to take the shaft apart you know I'll weigh the options out and we'll do a video of that and get all that caught up so sorry guys not much of a video today I just want to catch you up what's happened on this thing we did get the Silverado done today uh, we took the passenger side apart on it uh, did the wheel bearing ball joints control arms tie rods tie rods were seized on the brake disc was seized to the wheel bearing the wheel bearing is seized to the spindle and good time so i think it took about six hours per side just because it was rusty and the last one i did that wasn't was about two hours per side so you never know what you're going to get into and uh you know one thing's for sure especially on older chevy stuff you know everything's going to be rusty on it that's pretty much it guys for today's video like i said a real short video just want to catch you up on what's happening and that's it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.